and that cockle soup looked perfect for a cold Saturday lunch. Octopus is something you can also try if you can get hold of it. But if you can't find it, there are other great seafoods I associate with Spain and Greece. And it's this stuff, it's squid. And uh, I thought, obviously, you're doing some, another one of Spanish's great exports, which is chorizo, which is wonderful. This is chorizo picante, and it's the soft one. Uh, you can get the firmer ones as well, which you can just eat raw. These are the cooking ones, the softer ones. And we're going to mix the two together in a... In actually an Italian dish, in a risotto. So we're gonna, it cooks like a paella, but um, it's done like a risotto. So first off, we're gonna take some onions and garlic, start sweating that off, and then pop in our chorizo into there. Now, Actin, when I was reading about you, mm. you kind of fell into it and you, you want to thank your English teacher uh, for it, don't you? I didn't fall, I was pushed into it more, really. Pushed we were, into um, it. It was uh, Trevor Drury, my English teacher, uh, in, in, in Doncaster. Uh, and we were, there was a lot of mucking about in an English class one day, and he said, whoever shouts out next is going gonna, is gonna to have a terrible punishment, and that was, it was me. Uh, and he said, right, you've got you've to read something out at the school carol concert in front of the whole school. And I said, oh, you can't do that, that's, a, that's, a, that's not a proper punishment, you know. But he made me do this thing, and I, and I, I read out a piece of Dylan Thomas, uh, A Child's Christmas in Wales, that was fantastic. And I, um, and I remember I sort of got up in the, in the pulpit thing, in the big church in front of the whole school and and I I think something in me just sort of went oh this is great isn't it I did it was power it was power mad I think <laughs> and I um and I did this and I and I I enjoyed it so I did that and then he said to me oh that wasn't much of a punishment was it you you like <laughs> you that, like that really and I said uh, I said I did rather yeah so I thought I'd kind of won that round and that was the end of it he said oh well I need somebody to be in the school play so now you've got to be in the school play and I said oh you can't do that I can't wear makeup and tights and things like that it's I, I, I was I was 14 or something I thought I can't do that um, so he made me do that maybe do another school play and then uh, and then he sent me off to a group called uh, the South Yorkshire Theatre for Youth, right? Uh, which was then, I think, in Rotherham, which was um, which was very glamorous, as you can imagine. That first uh, attracted me to. Did your parents the have the same sort of view of acting as sort of my certainly my grandparents had of me doing cooking? It wasn't the done thing, was that? Uh, no, I don't think they did. I think they were. Well, I didn't really sort of take up the proper acting for many years after that. Really, that was where it started. But, uh, no, my mum had trained as a, as a singer, as an opera singer, and my mum and dad used to have a, uh, an act that they did in the, in the northern clubs. Right. So there was that sort of uh, showing off strain, Is this I in suppose. Doncaster? Or as it was one in... of the researchers told, told me this morning, you're from Doncaster. Doncaster. It's <laughs> yeah. gone up, you see, in the <laughs> world. He's a Chelsea girl, you know then. what I mean? Oh, I see, in <laughs> Doncaster. <laughs> um, this was all in... Yeah, this was all in Doncaster. And... Um, Yes, yeah, so I suppose that uh, to an extent it was in the in the genes or in the blood or something. So I don't. I suppose they weren't as uh, you, you, horrified by my interest as some parents might have been. I'll just run through. I've got a shallot garlic in there. We've got the chorizo in there. The rice has gone in. I always put white wine in my risottos. I don't know what these guys, but I, I like the white wine in there. Good um, and obviously we've got some uh, chicken stock in there as well. We just basically cook this, gradually add in the stock, cook this for sort of about 12 to 14 minutes, and you end up with what we've got here, which is um, basically this risotto mixture. You can also uh, alter this by adding a little bit more stock. And at this mo moment in time, I'm going to add my um, cauliflower in there as well, which we're going to thinly slice our cauliflower. Now, all these sort of looking back at your career as well, you've done mm. everything from sort of London's Burning, Casualty. Yes. It was in Bridget Jones' Diaries. I was in the, uh, I was in the second driver. one, yeah, yeah, Bridget Jones' Edge of Reason, yeah, yeah. But all, do I say, all small bits, people would see your face, but is it because you've done all these little bits and pieces that makes you, you know, learn the trade a little bit more, because you do a variety uh, of sort of stuff? I suppose I had done a variety of things. I mean, also doing, uh, I mean, there was a series years ago, Common as Muck, on the BBC, that was uh, less, uh, I was pretty, you know, big bit of that and, and other things but yeah you do all sorts of different things and you know somebody somebody gives you a, a, a large opportunity and you you take that and um, if there isn't with Bridget Jones I remember they'd been filming the second Bridget Jones film huge film for about a year and they they rang me up on the Monday I think and said will you come and do this part we've just written it for the end of the film to start on the Wednesday and do this thing driving around with Rennie Zellweger around yeah. London in a taxi and um, I kind of couldn't believe that they'd spent so much money on this film and done so much of it, and, uh, and with two days' notice, they thought, we need a scene at the end where she's in a taxi. Ring somebody up and get a taxi driver. Right. So they'd written this... It, it was all sort of a bit kind of... 
uh, you know, last, last minute. minute. Very different well, to doing what you're doing now, of course. Yes, mid-summer. Now the beautifully well-prepared and organised mid-summer. So you've the taken over from from John Nettles. Yeah. Yeah. Who is retired? I thought, to be honest, no. he would get killed well, he's off. Well, retired. He's retired from mid. No, I think they thought it'd be a bit sort of overly dramatic to. Overly to dramatic. Kill him. I've read. <laughs> I've read. <laughs> this is the stats of midsummer murders: yeah. two hundred and forty-six murders, yeah. twelve accidental deaths, yeah. eleven suicides, yeah. eight deaths by natural causes, and yeah. one geezer died in a vat of soup. Soup. Yeah. Now that's in a village. My village has got thirty it's people. It's not in, in a it. village. It's not a village. Right. What is it? It's a, a county. Oh, it's a county. It's the whole of a county. It's a right. huge area. Right. You know, There's thousands of, of people haven't been killed there, or poisoned <laughs> or <laughs> drowned yeah, into. Right. There's lots of others there. There's still lots of people to go through. Because this is your what the second? Well, this is my second series. Your it's second the 15th. series. It's the fifteenth. We've just started shooting the fifteenth uh, series of the show. Uh, I took over at the beginning of series fourteen, which is going out now. Uh, I believe there's another episode on, on ITV at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. How do, you, um, how do you do that? So it's taking over, do you, do you try and put it in your own? Or? Well, it's not take, I wasn't taking over the same character. I was take, they, they changed the character. John Nettle's character was retiring from the force and leaving, and uh, it just so happened that his cousin was also a detective chief inspector with right. another police force who then came to... Um, who moved to Midsummer to take over. But, I and mean, in terms of a success... It is huge. I mean, globally it's huge. Well, yeah, it's yeah. 200 and... It's about 200. I know. Two, I don't know how many territories there, there, there are, but I think we I go think everywhere. there's about most of them, isn't it? I think it is. I think North Korea and Burma don't, don't have it. I think Afghanistan to Zambia, I looked at. Oh, that's good. I would like exactly. to say that. Can I say that in future, yeah, exactly. future interviews? So I, was, I was looking at them as well. So, anyway, we're just going to finish off this. Okay. We've got our... The idea is with this squid, you get it, the pan nice and hot. We're going to finish off this now. I would finish off this with a little bit of mascarpone cheese, but I've been banned from using mascarpone cheese in this. Why? Because I've got... Italians are watching and they go a bit crazy. Mind you, you're not supposed to put fish with risotto as well, but... Oh. Anyway, I'm a Yorkshireman, so anyway, do what we want. You're not so, supposed to put fish with risotto? Apparently so, I've been told, yeah. <laughs> don't ask me why. Fish no, and cheese. Fish little... and cheese, I don't know why. Oh. Fish and cheese, yeah. But oh, cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because fish and cheese are thought not to go. Yeah, well, I, it does in this. But Parmesan. then they say things like, you know, onion and garlic not together, but... Really? Yeah. I know, You're not supposed but... to put onion and garlic in the same thing? You're not meant to in Italy. That's this week. They'll change the mind next week. But anyway, we've just got a little bit of uh, risotto. We're just going to finish that off. What do we need? Salt and pepper. That's your Parmesan cheese gone in there. Good quality Parmesan as well. A little bit of seasoning. You're a top chef, well, James. Can I ask you something about that's been worrying me for some years? What's that? It's not about me, you, is are it? Are you aware of... Not, not so far as I'm aware, I don't know. Right. Um, are you aware of something called non-brewed condiment? Non-what? Non-brewed condiment. No. I thought he was a chef. Have you, do you know non-brewed condiment? I've... So, uh, non-brewed condiment? Oh, no. for goodness sake, come on. It's a, look, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crisis. Of, <laughs> many, look, several times I've been into chip shops, fish Is this in midsummer? or is no, this... No, 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 this, this, this is absolutely real. Right. You go into chip shops or chip restaurants and you ask for the vinegar and they bring you something called a brown, watery liquid called non-brewed condiment. And you say, no, I want vinegar. And they say, that is the vinegar. And you say, it's not, it's this non-brewed condiment. And it's sort of water that is brown, it's odourless, it's tasteless. It doesn't do anything that vinegar is supposed to do with food. Right. And I can't understand why somebody has invented something to replace vinegar. Is it so hard to find or, or expensive to make or produce or something? I just but it's no good. It's it. the only reason I've come on the programme. You need to change top chef about shop. why this is happening. It's a bit like non-alcoholic wine. It, it is. It's sense. kind of mad. It's what's the point of this thing? But there you go. They, oh, is that for me? Thank yeah. you. And I've got no oh, non-brewed condiment to go with it. But well, I'm very that. sorry about it. I thought you'd have a, a, an answer for that. Yeah, there you go. Lovely. Try to taste a little bit of the risotto with the... Dive in. Tell us what you think. It'll be hot. You just nod, or you shake it. Oh, it's cheesy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll be cooking vanilla at the end of the show. Could be facing food heaven. Suet, the suet is mixed together with flour and water to make a soft dough, then filled with a beer braised beef and baby onions, and finally steamed for a couple of hours, and it's served with a big pile of hispy cabbage on the side.